people. What's happening, everybody? This is the Philly Experience Podcast alongside Chris Thacker and Tyre Hood. I'm your host, Max James. Tanner Martin is not in studio today. Yeah. He's on vacation visiting some family in Florida, but he'll be back for next week's show. Guys, the Phil's 66 and 60 overall record. There's still two games back of the Chicago Cubs for the wild card spot. Coming off a two game sweep of the Red Sox in Fenway Park. They're headed to Miami this weekend for three game series. And, you know, hopefully, I keep on saying, I hope they can sweep a team eventually. They just did with the Red Sox. Maybe they can do it with the Marlins. They haven't had great success against the Marlins this season. But hopefully, that changes going into this weekend. And Bryce Harper, man, he's been really hot. So hopefully, he can keep it going. The Eagles as well, preseason game number three tonight against the Baltimore Ravens. Woo! Some starters are expected to play. We'll get into if Carson Wentz should play, what our opinion is on that. Jason Peters also says he expects to play at least a half tonight. And we also signed Josh McCown coming out of retirement. Somehow, Howie Rosen was able to lure him out of retirement. And he is now going to battle out Clayton Thorson, which I assume shouldn't be too much of a battle because McCown (laughs) has the uh, NFL experience in his back pocket. And we'll also touch on a couple of side topics, including Melvin Gordon's holdout possibly going to go into the regular season and DeMarcus Cousins' ACL injury that he tears in Las Vegas last week. And they're looking at guys like Dwight Howard to fill his shoes. Mm -hmm. So we'll touch on that as well. But guys, we'll start with the fills today. Chris, I got you on the left side today. I got Tyre Hood on the right side. Big Eagles mind, big Phillies mind. So we'll go back and forth. Hey, we'll start with the Phils today. Let's start with the Phils. We okay. went Eagles last week. All right, all right. You got to eat your dinner Fe- before your dessert. All right. <laughs> feel free to chime in whenever you feel is necessary. Okay. But all right. I got Chris, no problem with what that. have you seen from this team in the last couple of weeks that, I should say the last week, well, that you've liked? First things first, I, t- I am taking full responsibility for Bryce Harper's hot streak because he clearly heard my rant from two weeks ago, you know, ripping him apart about how we brought him here to win World Serieses. And now, and man, last eleven games was it seven home runs, eighteen RBIs. He has been on fire lately. Hey, home run over the oh, good for you. Hey, T, I don't need <laughs> I don't need the sass today. Bryce Harper hit a home run over the Green Monster last night. Was that like a wise ass comment? No, that's a serious ass comment. See, that was opposite field. That, that, that was, was a bomb. Last no, but in all seriousness, yeah, that was a nice hole that, that he hit. That was oppo pop. Yeah, that was oppo pop. That 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 hit was awesome. I'm now, not going front. Now, looking at the uh, looking at the standings right now, we are a game and a half uh, behind the last wild card spot. We got St. Louis ahead of us, and we got the Mets right on our heels. Same exact record. So. This last upcoming month of the season is going to be huge. Like you said, we got a series against the Marlins coming up, which I would like to think would be a walk in the park. But like you said, the Marlins, and for some reason the Diamondbacks have just had our number this year, and I do not know why. And then after... It's funny to me, too. You know what? <laughs> I'll, you'll get your turn in just a second. But yeah, we got we got the Marlins coming up. I would like to think that wouldn't be too much of a problem. Then we got the Pirates, a huge series against the Mets. We got and then after that we got the Reds, the Mets again, and then the Braves. We th- this is going to be huge because I know we said it like three weeks ago and a month ago that this is going to make the, or break the season. This is going to make or break the season. Yeah, a lot of division games coming up. Obviously, like you said, we haven't had great success against the Marlins this year. But, again, these are games we have to win. Like the Marlins coming up in this series this weekend, we have to win this series. All right, at least two out of three. Okay, it's getting too late into the season now for us to continue to drop games to weaker opponents. Agreed. The Pirates arguably have been the worst team since the All-Star break. They're, they look like a Little League team out there. They just got <laughs> smoked last night like 11 nothing by the Nats. They did. At 11-1. home. 11-1. Oh, they scored yeah. in the ninth. They did. Um so, listen, and like you said, the Mets coming up, too. So, these are big-time series that we need to win. I think we're home for I think we're home for the Mets, obviously, for one of those series. Uh, the Yeah, the first one. The and, second, the, and the Pirates as well. The se- Yes, we are. And then the second series we got against the Mets will be in New York. And then that Brave series following that second Mets series is home. The four-game series. It's, gonna, it's not going to be easy. All right, it's going to be not, difficult. The, the Mets pitching staff just scares me a little bit because mm-hmm. – we have guys like Drew Smiley going out there last night against the Red Sox. He can only go three and two-thirds innings. 
And again, you got to. I give Gabe Kapler credit. He pulled him at the right time. I mean, if he left him out there much longer, it would have gotten ugly. It wouldn't have been a five-two win. Good no. thing. Good thing he pulled Smiley out. But again, you got to give yeah. credit to our bullpen. They pitch well, and we've been knocking them all season long for their inconsistency. And you know, we don't have too many big names in that bullpen right now. No. But the guys like Matt Morin are getting the job done. Hector Neris has been pitching, you know, as what? as well as we could have hoped for. And you know, we just got to keep it going. I, I like the fact that. After this Padres series, it feels like every series we go back and forth. But I like the fact that after that Padres series, we regroup and we rebound in Boston. You know, it's not easy losing the series to the Padres at home. No, no one expected us to go up to Boston and win this series. I don't no, know. we were able to no sweep the two gamer. Now we just have to go to Miami, who who we've been there before this year, obviously multiple times, and we just we haven't had any type of success. We haven't gotten the bats going. Our pitching's been weak. Okay, on a on a positive note. Um, I know I've been really negative about the Phillies as of lately, but I will say that that Boston Red Sox sweep that kind of did raise my eyebrow a little bit. Like I'm not even going front. I got at minimum I expected us to lose both of those games and at the most split, but to sweep the Boston Red Sox that's actually on the road too. Look, on know, the road, that's I know actually Max feat. is usually Mr. Positive, but wow, you are Mr. Negative today. Hey, hey, I said it was impressive. Man. Nola, Nola was in one of those games. I, 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 I know. was hoping for at least a win in that in, one. In the heat, man. With that, all due respect, Chris. With all due respect, you got to admit, majority of the Phillies fans coming out of that Padres series didn't have any confidence in this team. You can't lose well, I mean, a series to the Padres been, at home. Yeah, you can't, and you know. Look, I'm a big Flyers guy. I'm saying the Phillies have been Flyersing it up this whole se- season. You know what that means, Max? I'm going to assume inconsistent. It's beating the teams that are better than you and losing to the teams that you're, oh, you're are worse than you. Are. That's fair. They are Flyersing it up this whole season. They, they they can manage to beat Boston in a series, but then they lose to the Padres. They lose to the Marlins. This uh, this streak Marlin. coming up here, Chris, I think is probably and and obviously majority of the people would say this. The biggest part of the season because of the weaker opponents that we have. If we can't beat these teams, and the Mets are two of these series coming up, and if they beat us and win both of those series, we're probably That's done. Because yep. the Nats are ahead of us, the Cubs are still ahead of us, the Cardinals obviously are still ahead. Yep. And now you throw the Mets up there, we just can't have it happen, man. We we really need our pitching and our offense to stay hot. One guy we haven't talked about today yet, Reese Hoskins, he's been struggling like crazy over the last. Even since the All-Star break, I want to say ooh, last ooh, ooh, month or two. I know two. why. I know why. Why is he in the leadoff spot? <laughs> Listen, you and the rest of Philly want to know that question. That's the... Yo, man, like, what the heck? Man, come on, Gabe. Come on, man. No one has the answer. No one why? really has the answer. Why I get, is the power hitter in the leadoff? Obviously, because he gets on base and he sees a lot of pitches at, and that's what you want your leadoff hitter to do. We lost that, Andrew McCutcheon. We tried multiple guys in that spot. But we just we don't have anybody else who's as patient as Reese Hoskins is. Look, we're trying our best to you know implement the Billy Bean Moneyball tactics here. T, getting on base. We don't care about the other play. We just need guys getting on base. Chris, a question, I'm real quick for you. I can't wait. We have Velasquez tonight, who's been <laughs> better as of late. But Sorry. I, my question is not directed at Velasquez. It's directed at Zach Eflin, who's going to start on Saturday. Why are we skipping Vargas's start? and putting Eflin in there Saturday because Nola from now here on out is obviously going to pitch every fifth day when he's not going to get any extra days off. So Vargas is the one getting skipped, I, and I'm just scratching my head. Yeah, I've seen that. That's I, scary. I, I mean, I, I, he's I, I, arguably I our second-best pitcher well, I, right now. Okay, uh, to try to – okay, I was I was about to be like, nah, Max, calm down. I, I, I can see what he's doing. But then I just looked at the schedule, and I'm like, uh, okay, maybe maybe you're right. My thinking is, ah, let's not use one of our better pick- pitchers like Vargas against the Marlins and save him for the Pirates. Um, but the Pirates aren't that much better. I know, I know. I, I was thinking, like, he's going to save them, for, save Vargas for the Mets. But no, the Mets don't happen until after the Pirates. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe something's bothering Vargas, and it's just undisclosed. That's my it's guess. It's possible. But listen, if, if we're going to go, in, and this is obviously thinking far ahead here, but I'm just trying to play this through in my head. Like, say we get to the wild card game and win the wild card with Nola on the mound. How would that stack up when we go to play, if we were to go to play the Dodgers? Like, who would who would you say our second starter would be and start game one? God, and it would be right. against, like, See, Kershaw and, or and that's Punch where we, and Ryu? And that's where we run into issues. <laughs> okay. See, that's right. that, look, 
Now I'm back to being Mr. Negative. Look, I, I know you guys are trying to be optimistic about the Philly season, and you know they look like they're trying to turn it around. Open conversation, T. Open conversation. <laughs> you know, that's, we're just we're just asking questions, answering questions. I here. mean, that's fine. But my whole thing is, like, when they get if should they get into the playoffs, okay, where where are you going to get help from in the pitching category? You only got one good pitcher, for real, for real, and then everybody else is a pretty significant drop off. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. Uh, wholeheartedly, but Vargas hasn't had that one outing this year for us at least. That's been like, oh man, he just got killed out there. Like he had no shot of winning the game. He's been pretty quality every start. Six innings, two runs. Five innings, three runs. You know, kind of keeping us in ball games. True, so, true. But now we run into the issue of the inconsistent hitting. Yeah, and that and that's been a big time question mark this whole season long. Right now we got Harper, who's in a hot stretch, and he's always been marked as a second half player but we, what we really need to do and again like you said why is Reese Hoskins in the leadoff spot hey we're winning games right now do you take him out of the leadoff spot coming off of this two game sweep of the Red Sox yeah because he's not having much success so who would you put in the leadoff spot though yeah that's the underlying question do you put- I mean I didn't mind Scott Kingery leading off I didn't mind it I know it's not ideal you really want a patient guy in that leadoff spot Gene Segura is not patient enough, which is, enough. Which, which is exactly yeah, why is. Reese Hoskins is there. Because who who else gets in more full counts than Reese Hoskins? Nobody. That's true. I think he's seen the most pitches out of any player this season in all of baseball. What about I, what I about what about JT? As I've stated many a times. Yeah, but then here's the problem with that. It you remember how earlier in the season with JT and the five for Hoskins four Harper three kind of mm-hmm. just stretched our lineup. If you stack all those guys at the top, you're top heavy up there. You really want to have that lineup stretched because once you hit the bottom of the lineup. Kingery really hasn't been producing as well as he's been in previous weeks. Yeah. Okay. Cesar, who I'm not going to knock because he's hitting like 285 for the season, which and is pretty gonna good. that's going to be my next option. Cesar Hernandez back yeah. in the leadoff spot? Yeah. I actually wouldn't mind that. He, he was our leadoff guy for a majority of last season. He's 285, and for the most part, he's a pretty patient hitter. Yeah. I just don't think Hoskins – he can't keep Reese Hoskins in the leadoff no. spot. No. You just can't do it. No, I don't care what kind of streak you go on. That's not working. You You're, have to put him back, and and he doesn't have to hit cleanup. He doesn't. He really doesn't have to hit cleanup. But you got to drop him lower in the lineup. Yes, yes. I absolutely. like having Bryce Harper in the three, two, three. He, he can you can really hit Bryce anywhere, and he'll produce for you. You can. But Hoskins down to two thirty eight on the season right now, and that's just not him. Man, no. he was up around two sixty five, and he's really falling off a cliff. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's just saying, pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, just. All right. Well, now I'm upset. McClutchy. Because you reminded me that if we do make it to the wild card and win, it's the Dodgers we have to face. Yeesh. Well, listen. Consider this: if we reach the wild card game and lose, do you consider the season a success with us reaching the playoffs at least? Yes, because it'll be the first time we make it to the playoffs. I say yes because no one on earth expects us really to make the playoff spot. I say yes with all the inconsistencies and all the injuries that we that the Phillies have had to overcome. But the last time the Phillies even sniffed the playoffs was what 2011. Yes, 2012. I don't think they. I think 12 was when they started dropping off. Yeah, 2011. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. Um, (laughs) Yeah. No. So yeah, I would consider it a success just just based on that. But it's a tight race because, at, you know, Mets are right on our heels, and we got we still got a long way to. I think even to, just yeah, I think you Nats. have to buy back in. I really think you have to buy back in. Here's why: mm. we won't let you in if they do make it. Mm. The last okay. couple of weeks, Cute. we've been sitting here and we come in here each week. One week it'll be, oh, this team's out of it; it's done. Mm. Then we go on a like a four and two week as far as wins and losses. Come back in here the following week. Oh yeah, we're back in it now. This team's been back and forth, but we've been saying this for how many months now, and we're still there. True. I think this is just going to have to play out until the end. I think 88, 87 wins is going to get that second wild card spot. And if we can just have the ball bounce our way a couple games here and there, we put ourselves in a good position to win. Now, the one thing I will say is the Cubs, if you look at their home and road splits this season, it's dramatically Oh, opposite. wow. It's just on yeah. two opposite ends of the spectrum, Agreed. right? Their, their home Here, record. Do you want me to read it to you? Go ahead. Go ahead. Their home record is 43 and 19. Wow. When they play at home, they win. Away, they are 25 and 39. Wow. Just I, I didn't realize how dramatic ridiculous. It was. You know, just a split. The split there that you don't expect from a team with that much talent on it. And but the, the one reason I do give the, the Phillies a shot is because if the Cubs play on the road, the majority of the games are going to lose, obviously. And the stats show it right there. So 
unless they pick it up, because they, they no question do the Cubs have more talent than us, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But I do think that if they can continue to struggle on the road as the season closes in, I think we, we put ourselves in a good spot there. And that's probably going to run away with that first wild card spot. They might even catch the Braves. You never know what the Braves do down the stretch. They're battling some injuries right now. Dansby Swanson's hurt. Austin Riley's hurt. But I think Ender and Ciarte's hurt as well for the Braves. So I think if we can just keep at least stay within a game or two by the end of the season. Because, again, like you said, we have games against the Mets in hand coming up. Okay. We have games against the Nats. So the one team that I'm focused on right now is the Cubs because we don't have any more games against them. We really are hoping – and you never – good teams really don't want to rely on other teams to lose, right? No. 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 But the Cubs are one team that you might look at and say, hey, we really do need them to struggle a little bit because even if we win, we're still two games back at this point in the season. Yep. yep. All right, let's, let's let's move on to, to T's topic here. You're doggone right we're going to move on to T's topic. You're doggone right. You know why? Because it's that time of the year. Yes. Pre, preseason game number three tonight against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I will admit the last – or I should say the first two preseason games – there's not been much excitement. No, no starters have really played. Um, the, all, honestly, the one yeah, headline has been Sudfeld's injury in week one, and the second headline last week was Cody Kessler's concussion. So, when are we going to have some headlines that aren't injuries for this team? Man, that, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting really tired of you know the whole backup quarterback situation, which is why I have come to an epiphany. Ooh, um, that's a word. I said earlier um, in these shows that. I want to see Carson Wentz out there to get some reps. Now, I don't want to see him at all in the preseason. I don't want to see a single snap tonight. I don't want to see him out there at all. Reason being, because it was pretty clear that the first off, the offensive line can't hold up and protect a backup quarterback against backups in the NFL. And now we've had two straight weeks of quarterbacks going out. Now, I'll be it. We've got to see some interesting quarterback play out of Clayton Thorson because now Clayton Thorson looks like a halfway decent quarterback. Played well last week against the Jags. He sure did. Yes, he did. He, he showed me some things that I didn't expect to see at least for another couple of years out of him. I think he did pretty good. But the fear of me losing Carson Wentz, it scares the living crap out of me. I just want to apologize to Clayton Thorson because... <laughs> Last week, I said some silly... Well, I, I said to never put a ball into Clayton Thorson's hands, but... Oh, you piece of Swiss cheese! I'm so sorry about that, Clayton. <laughs> so you, I guess you, you can sling you some will, cheese around. You want to put a ball in Cody Kessler's hands, but you don't want to put a ball in Clayton Thorson's hands. Look, do I have much of a choice now? <laughs> no, I guess I not, mean, because now you got McCown, who Josh, at least capable. We've Josh seen him play in this league. His 11th team. Wow. His 11th? That is nuts. Now, First you, time in the NFC East. Now, do you think we see... I mean, Josh McCown has literally been here for, what, five days? Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he doesn't have that playbook down quite yet. But we're still going to see him. We're still going to see him. I still think we're going to see more of Clayton Thorson. Oh, we definitely going to see Clayton Thorson. Who knows? I I think Wentz, at least next week, should get a couple series. No, he won't play in pre... If he's no, going to play at all. Next week. If he's going to play not at all. Week. It's going to be tonight. He'll be tonight. If, if he, he does play, it's going to be tonight. He ain't playing but at all But if he doesn't play week. at all tonight... Preseason game week four, nobody, no starters play. No. That's just how it is. Are you sure? Um, and here's the reason, you're, 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 Chris. Chris, here's the reason. You don't want him to get any snaps. Guys no. making the team are, are battling in week four. Yeah. The guys that are on the bubble. Yeah. They, they want... I should say the coaches want that whole game for the people that are trying to make the roster spot. And on top of that, I mean, it's week four... Right. Let's just get the regular season. Yes. Nobody wants our stars getting hurt. Yes. And I'm sick and tired of seeing quarterbacks on my team getting hurt. Like, I literally had, like, I literally had a flashback of Cody Kessler. No, not Cody Kessler. Um, Tag. Why did I, why am I forgetting his name now? Jeez. Whatever. Anyway, the quarterback that broke his wrist. Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> there you Nate go. Sudfeld. Yeah, there you go. I literally had a flashback of him, and I thought, immediately thought about Wentz. And that scared me. Because Wentz is one of those quarterbacks that likes to stand in the pocket and take hits. I don't need you taking hits. As a matter of fact, you know why? As a matter of fact, it's funny. Eli Manning, he played in a preseason game last week. But do you know why he's been able to survive in the NFL? Because he doesn't take hits. He goes down before there's any contact. He protects himself. It's funny. We make jokes about that all the time. But it's effective. Their best availability 
In order for you to be able to play on the field, you have to be available. I need Carson Wentz available for the regular season. I don't care about preseason snaps for him. We'll come back to that Giants topic in a little bit. But I do want to ask you about why, I should say, why, is in your opinion, do you think Wentz shouldn't play tonight? And I'll tell you why I think he should. Two reasons being. One, you can't, you really do need him on the field because he needs to get just in game. There's something different about it. And I really do buy into that. I really do think guy like I get it training camp and all that stuff leading up to the preseason and a regular season they have practice and they you know they get cohesive as a unit together but again you don't really have that it's different chemistry when you're on the on the field in front of the big crowd under the lights prime time you know that's a good point I want even if it's just a series or two and again he doesn't have to go gunslinging the ball down the field yeah please just don't. to get in front of maybe take a couple handoffs like Mitch, Mitch Trubisky in week one, he just handed the ball three times and went and sat well, down. Well, Mitch still has something to prove, so it, that, there's reasons why he's playing. Yeah, I get I get what you're saying. I get, I, 100% I understand. Well, like guys like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, you're not seeing them in the preseason. That's not happening. Probably not, but I do think Wentz, especially coming off a couple of injuries, I just, and we have a lot of new faces. Jordan Howard's new, Miles Sanders is new, DJX is back, and he's new, you know? Well, with DJ, you got to get on the same do, page, well, man. With, well, with DJ, all you got to do is just sling that thing as hard as you possibly can <laughs> down the field, and boom, there's DJ. I just think he should play at least a series or two. I'm not saying a whole quarter, even. Just get out there and, you know. Yeah, my, you're not playing this week in, in week number four. I get you don't want him to get hurt. Nope. And I've been going back and forth on this because I'm, I'm usually, as a fan, you want to see him play, obviously, but I've been going back and forth on this because I'm usually one of those guys. Who says the guy, these guys need to play mm. in the preseason? And then I see Sutfeld's injury. I'm like, man, like there's no reason for Wentz to be out in this field. You're, yeah, you're not wrong. But, but I think by this th- point, I just think he's, he's got to get at least a series or two knock in. Knock on wood, that can easily happen to Wentz in week two. You know? That's true, but I'd it, rather have it happen during a regular season than during a meaningless game that's not going to count. You're not wrong. You just tell Wentz, listen, if you see any, if you even sniff any pressure, just throw the ball into the 17th row. Yeah, but then again, you, you think he's really going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. All right, that's a fair point. Look, Carson Wentz is a man who has fire in his eyes when he's in the game. Am I wrong? No. Listen, I would Am like I wrong? to see, here's another point line. I want to make. That that Ravens first team defense that'll be out there, that's that'll be pretty good, you know, competition for going up against Wentz. Yeah, but I from, think from what I heard during their joint practices, he's been lighting them up like a Christmas tree. But the Ravens are one of the top defenses in the league. Mm. Probably top ten. Probably top ten. They're on the they're on the plus side of okay. the league. So again, they're not the Bears defense or anything like that. He's not gonna have Khalil Mack chasing him down. Thank you. But oh. God. He's get that. The Ravens are a respectable defense. I'd like to see him out there for a little bit. All right, all right. You you got your views. I got mine. So and McCown, what are we really looking forward to? I shouldn't say what we're looking forward to. What are we looking for in McCown? What are we expecting to see? To, to is this sure guy making the team definitely, or does he have something to prove? Play. I think he is going to make the quarterback because I don't think Cody Kessler. I don't think Cody Kessler is going to make the. Make oh the no, no, no! He's done. Clayton Thorson is probably done. going to be um, on the practice squad. And Nate Sudfeld's eventually going to come back. So, yeah, I think I think McCown is going to make the roster, and I think Sudfeld's going to come back. What if Clayton Thorson now plays McCown in these next two games? Ooh. Again, which, you're paying McCown. Very a, a, like, you're it's paying, very likely. Yeah, but you're paying McCown like $2.4 million, I believe, the salary is. And you're really not paying Thorson much at all. But even still, would you want would you want a quarterback really backing up your franchise and you have Super Bowl, um, Super Bowl aspirations? Wow. Like, Listen, you got a 40-year-old 40 year Josh happens. McCown. You really only brought him in because you needed an extra body. You True. Know, you know, T, once upon a time, Drew Bledsoe got injured. Mm-hmm. You know, and they throw it, you know, Bill Belichick right. throws Before you make this argument, snapper. don't make this argument. Because if once goes down, the season's over regardless. Oh, you can't I make know. this argument. I know. No, but, okay, did you think they thought anything of Tom Brady in no. 1999? No, I don't think they did. From what I heard, he played like crap. He was crap. He was hot crap. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not saying Clayton Thorson is Tom Brady. Please don't. But I'm saying sometimes you throw a guy in and he can make things happen. I like Clayton Thorson because he was a four-year player. And for me, I like guys coming out of college with a lot of experience. I just, agree with uh, that. just how I like Matisse Thibel relating this to the Sixers. He's a four-year player at Washington. I like his game. He's an older player, and he fits into our team that's win now. We're not young. We're not up and coming in the future. We want to win right now. And I agree with that statement. So, I do. Uh, Max, T and I want to talk to you about something. Oh, boy. But before we talk to you about something, we need you to listen to something. <laughs> we need you to listen to All right, what do we got here? Yeah, we got our own The Philly Experience podcast on YouTube. Please check it out. Subscribe. <laughs> like, comment. 
All right. The, the Max said a thing last week. Yeah. Um, uh, just, but if they get, an if they get Ezekiel Elliott back, and I, I, I think they got it. Well, right now they are equally, well, they have equal odds to win the Super Bowl than the Eagle, the, with the Eagles. We have equal odds. So, Whoa, oh my God. What? This is my point to wrap up my point. I, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. I mean, you heard me and T's reaction. Right now, without Ezekiel Elliott, the Dallas Cowboys have equal odds to win the Super Bowl. That's what, it's, the, that's what it said in Vegas. And now listen, listen, okay, listen. Vegas I isn't the end all be all. But get, get, you, let, me, big, let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. I don't know if that was based on Zeke playing this season or if that's where they were at this point in time without him on the roster. I th- I'm willing to bet it's right now without Ezekiel Elliott because apparently Jerry Jones forgot who he was. Which, and, which um, ain't the smartest thing. To yeah, that was the one of the most idiotic comments I have. Possibly ever seen. All right, here's my point here. Here's why I'll make the point here. You made a point last Cowboys, week, too. Cowboys beat us <laughs> twice last year. Wentz played in both of those games. Is that correct? He sure did. Mm-hmm. Right? He yeah. played in both those games. We lost both these games. With a broken back. The cow? No, not the first time. I don't think it was the first se- time. The second time. The second time, yes. Yep. Not the first game. And the first game was at home, by the way. Let me point that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On a prime time Sunday night, we lost that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Dallas defense is flat out better than ours. All right, their linebackers fly. Jalen Smith, Van Der Esch, those both of those guys are better than any linebacker we have by a lot. Right, their corners, Byron Jones especially, that guy's very very talented. And Demarcus what? Lawrence on the edge, they got guys all over that defense that can make plays all over. Not saying our defense, the Eagles, I mean, is bad. All right, we got playmakers on that defense too, but our cornerbacks. There's been a rotation and a rotation and a rotation. We don't even have what our starters are at this point, and we're going into preseason week three, right? So from a defensive standpoint, T, you're a big defensive guy. You can't you can't even sit here and say that the Eagles' defense is better. The Cowboys, hands down, have have a better defense. Here's the key: Ezekiel That's Elliott. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott needs to come back for an order for this Cowboys team, and 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 this is me because you guys are coming at me pulling up stuff from the past. So I'm going to make the point. I'm making the point. And again. I'm not rooting for this to happen. I'm making the no. point, though, as a Cowboys fan, not as not me personally, but from a Cowboys standpoint. You are in hot water. From a yeah, Cowboys really standpoint, are. not yes. as a Cowboys fan, from a Cowboys standpoint, on how they could beat the Eagles this season and win the division. Ezekiel Elliott, I with, get what you're saying. Or, go ahead. Go ahead. What, with Ezekiel Elliott, I, I hear that, and I go, sure. Yeah. Sure. You said without Ezekiel Elliott. That's why T and I, I was like, what? Oh, and he was a, like, what? That's a, people misspeak sometimes. Well, people misspeak. I, I, I don't think you meant to. <laughs> I, I think that there's no way in hell that if Ezekiel Elliott doesn't play for the Cowboys that they can beat the Eagles, in my opinion, as long as one stays healthy. Okay. But if yeah. he is healthy, then the Eagles better pay attention because this team is – the Cowboys have the same team they did last year for the most part. They got Amari Cooper, obviously now for a full season – and you have really have to watch out for this Cowboys team. That's all I'm saying. Before we really get deep into the discussion, um, you said you mentioned something about our defense. I, I gotta I gotta get this off my chest Ooh. about our defense. Okay. All right. And I, I know, um, Chris, you you said that you sent some some a little bit of anger from me. Yeah, just a little bit. I am. Oh, okay, pissed before you go off. crazy, let's just have a nice mature conversation. <laughs> man to man here, man to man. T, what's the problem? I'll tell you what the problem is. Okay. Oh, boy. I seen that dog on prevent defense in last week's preseason game. Did you? What the heck did I say about that dog on preseason defense? Uh, I mean, that, that dog on prevent defense. That's when they all line up on the first down marker, right? Yes. Uh, something along the lines of. Yes. And they swarm to the ball. Well, apparently, I just seen a stat the other day in an article. Ooh. Actually, by Jeff McClain, to be exact. And apparently, that defense is actually very successful. I don't care. It's retarded. Okay, wrong word. It's stupid. Okay? It's utterly stupid. Live mic, T. Live mic. <laughs> Look, man, it, how many? I can think of a number of things to reverse, <laughs> to reverse that defense. Listen. Quick hitch. Screens. I want to respond oh when you're gosh. done. When you're done, I want to respond. You, you Dude. Can, you can put that defense in an arm lock. Are you telling me that? The whole, you can reverse that? The whole point of a Jim Swartz defense is to put pressure on the quarterback with the front four. Well, you can't do that if the corners are playing five to seven plus yards off the doggone wide right receiver. Man up! Here's, the, here's, here's one of my responses going to be, T. If that Titans game never happens last year and they don't get that first it's down, an outrage. then you're looking at this prevent defense and saying it's a great thing. The only reason you're... Against it is because it didn't work last year in one game that cost us against the Titans. And it doesn't work now. 
Well, I didn't see the play last week specifically. Did did anything there come was of a that? Couple, there was a couple of plays. No, it did not result in a first down. But the fact of the matter is it's easily reversible. You get a good amount of blockers out there, miss a couple of tackles, boom, you got a first down. It looks like the Tennessee <laughs> Titans game all over again. That's my issue. <sighs> That's fair. T. Uh, no, I understand what he's saying, Chris. You understand what he's saying. No, I, I just wanted to ask T, you know, when he's getting Jim Schwartz's job. I don't know. Pending because know. because I'm sick of this. You're clearly smarter. I'm not smarter than the defensive coordinator employed by the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm, I'm not smarter. I don't I'm, know. You convinced me. I'm not smarter. All I'm saying is is that the, the, the defense doesn't work and it's easily reversible. So when something doesn't work and you can easily counter it, don't you think you need to come up with another counter to that counter? I mean, instead of. Being asinine and running the same thing over again? We had a very similar conversation once upon a time when I brought up that's what makes Bill Belichick so successful. <laughs> I compl- <laughs> I hate saying that. I'm sick of you. <laughs> but, no, but no, I'm making I'm making your point here. Because they do need to make a change. Because when you when when a coach like Bill Belichick, which I'm just using him because you know he's the best of the best. He, he'll be like, all right, I see what these guys are doing. Hey, Tom, do this, and then we're all, we'll be all good. And that's the reason why Tom Brady threw for over 500 yards against us. In a losing effort. It was a losing effort, but guess what? What? If you go back and look at the game, look how many yards they were playing off the receivers. Free release. Uh, when I rewatch the Super Bowl highlights, I rewatch. The offensive plays. <laughs> All right. Just don't be living in the past over there, Christopher. <sighs> hey, look out of the future. That was a good time, okay? It was. Don't, it was. Don't, don't mess up my... Listen, I got, I got a couple notes written down here about this Cowboys-Eagles topic just to wrap it up. T, you can make points that the Eagles defense has more play, more talent, I should say, than the Cowboys. Right? But I can make the point that the Cowboys have more talent. So let's just say that those cancel each other out. They're both going to be good defenses this year, in my opinion. Questionable. We Go look ahead. at why the Eagles are favored, and we all agree that the Eagles are favored in this division. Here's why the Eagles are favored, right? Carson Wentz is really the only question mark for this Eagles team. If he can stay healthy, right, we got we know we have talented backs. We know we have a talented offensive line. Playmakers on the outside and a solid defense for the most part. Agreed. Right, so this is the only question mark of this team is can Wentz stay healthy? And if he does, Super Bowl contenders, I should say. Agreed. Now, from the Cowboys' standpoint, what you really need to see if you're a Cowboys fan is Dak Prescott take a step forward this year and play Better than how, better than hat. Excuse me, better than what he has in the last, I should say, two years, maybe three. Right. So obviously, take a step forward from there. And right. can a couple playmakers for Dallas really step up? Right. We look at guys like Gallup. We look at guys like can Witten be any as far as a t- from a tight end? Mm-hmm. Can he groom any younger guys, or can he just be? Because again, when he was there, he was pro- probably the number one target two years ago for Dak, and he knows that offense inside and out. He's been there for how many years, right? I get he's coming out of retirement after one season. Very true. And if Zeke can come back, then you have two question marks there. You have the playmakers for Dallas, and you have the quarterback play for Dallas, and you have the injury question mark for Wentz. That's, that's to sum it up right there, basically. That's you know? the major thing right there is if he comes back. Because right now the Cowboys just made a real, like, little mini boo-boo. Right. Just a little, little mini boo-boo. Especially when you first off, when you disrespect Ezekiel Elliott by saying Zeke who, and you're trying to put <laughs> – the offense on a fourth round running back's right. back. It's not exactly the smartest thing to do. And then on top of that, you go ahead and you pay Jalen Smith $69 million in a new contract. Now, nice. I'll be it deserved. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. But here it is. You still have to figure out what you're going to do with Zeke. Because Zeke's not coming back until you give him a new contract. Dak is up for a new contract. Amari Cooper is up for a new contract. You have a lot of your major players that is due for a contract and to throw $69 million at a linebacker, nice. not exactly the smartest thing to do. Uh, you're right. But but they, but Jalen Smith is very, very good at what he not does. Not denying that. Not denying just, that. Just to simplify how everything is written down here in front of me. I mean, I get Three question marks for the Cowboys going into the season. One, obviously, much bigger than the other two with Ezekiel Elliott. True. And the one question mark for the Eagles, in my opinion. You could make a case for the defensive line as far as the edge rushers, maybe not as talented as they've been in the past. Agreed. Chris Long retiring. But that's basically on paper simple for you right there. Can the Eagles keep ones healthy? Can 
the Cowboys take a step forward in talent this year and can Zeke get back on the field? Chris, what were you going to say? Um, no, I was just going to say that, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. You would have rather allocated those assets to uh, other bigger problems. like Zeke. Or not paid a linebacker for $69 million, period. Well, yeah. But I, I know you're also saying you would have rather put that on Zeke. And the thing I also wanted to address with you, I, I, I know this is an, a talented offensive line, but like T said earlier, two quarterbacks have gotten hurt in two games. Yep. Which means... Concerns. I mean, I, 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 then again, it's also the, the starters aren't playing every snap like they're going to in the regular season. So, you know, I, you, you can't exactly pin it on one individual person. But I think you are right, though. In mm. terms of the single question mark being Carson Wentz, because he's yeah, that's still what I'm saying. That's how, that's true. I just tried to simplify it right in front of me here, and I, that's all I can come up with. And, and like I mentioned earlier, with the edge rushers, but you have a pretty solid defense for the most part, and you have guys that can play the cornerback position. Because I know a lot of people out there are going to say, "Oh, the, the cornerback plays inconsistent," blah blah, mm. which it has been. But we have names who've been here and run this offense, or excuse me, run this defense before, especially last season, obviously. <laughs> So I just think the big question mark is is the one's health. We have yeah. playmakers on offense. We have a good line. We have two talented running backs, which we haven't had two out of two out of the three years in the Doug Peterson era. We haven't really had a running game, you know. And this year we finally have two guys that really go hand in hand with each other. One's a bruiser. Yeah. The other one can get to the outside. Agreed. So it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun season to watch. And I'm just looking forward to these two matchups between the Cowboys and the Eagles. I think it's going to be great this year. Oh, yeah. and I understand Like I understand that you want to see Carson tonight. I understand. And Wentz probably feels the same way. Give the people what they want to see. I understand that. But listen, I, I need you to sit down on the bench, please, and protect yourself, please. I, I, I don't need I, you to. I disagree. I, I think he has to play. I think it's just a series. Not much saying play a whole quarter or a half. I don't even want him handing the football off. T, I think staying up till 2 a.m. watching film – has done this to you. <laughs> Not playing Carson Wentz in the preseason game will go as as far as going forward into the season. It's going to result in probably a struggling first couple games. We could be. That's not true. No. Listen, you're going on the road to Atlanta in week two, and you're going on the road on a short week to Lambeau in week four. That could easily be a two and two start right there. Mm-hmm. Just for just because I don't play him in one series of a preseason game, in which I'm saying, I, and again, if I'm coaching this team, I play him maybe a quarter tonight. Wouldn't you say playing in game is different? I did than at practice. Chris, would you play him a card someone's a quarter, just a quarter tonight? Would you play him a quarter? A court? No. You wouldn't play not, him a full quarter? Not a quarter. Heck no, no, no. Maybe I know you said a series. I w- I feel like I'd be a little more lean. I I'd maybe go I go for a second one. And remember, preseason ain't nothing but this. Let's be honest. We're talking about practice. That's the, that's really it all it is. Like seriously, come on. But hey, would you would you rather Carson hit the ground running or start him cold week one? I think you got again. Listen, you have to get him in there, Chris. You yeah. have to get him in there. Yeah. I think you ha- I think you do. And again, maybe maybe a quarter's too much. That's just me speaking in my opinion. But I think you got to see. He's got to see the field tonight. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah, this is a losing battle for He's going to go to training camp, and then what? He's just going to step on the field week one in prime time against the – or I shouldn't say prime time, but in week one, regular season game at home and just be a superstar? Tom Brady does it every year. At least Tom Brady's a different, Tom a different Brady's, breed of human beings. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers does it. Drew Brees. All right, you're talking about the best all time. No, what makes you think Carson Wentz won't be? I'm not saying he's because not, but you can't put him in the same category. He has only played one full season. Dave. You can't put him in the same category as those guys. I'm not. I'm not. But I mean, I'm going to treat. Did. I'm not. But I'm going to treat him the same. Carson way. Wentz has something to prove this year. I know he can prove it in the regular season. I don't need him to prove it in the preseason. T, 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 T. I don't know how to Stop explain to you any better. T, you, you, look, Carson. Look, I, I want to believe Carson can be as good as those guys and even surpass them. Mm-hmm. I want this to be our quarterback for the next 10 years. Okay? Agreed. Look, it, when you compare him to the best in the game, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees. I'm not comparing them. You just you compared them. You just, you just did. You said I'm just saying names. give him T, the same T, treatment. T. I did not compare them. Yeah, but but you're you're expecting him to perform like those guys. Week one, you may see it against Washington, but you go on the road to Atlanta. Week two, that, you go on the road on a short game. week to yeah, Lambeau. I agree week four, with you. 
And I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe T is on to something with Washington being a walk in the park. Maybe I didn't say that. Oh, Washington. Whoa, whoa, no, I'll say that right now. I will say that they're a walk in the damn park. They are a walk in the park. <laughs> they got nobody. All right, look who their starting quarterback options are. Dwayne Haskins Dwayne. hasn't played a game in the NFL. And who's the other guy? Case Keenum. We our last time I saw him, he was getting destroyed hey. in the in the championship ground by us at home. You're always on your back. Thank you, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not worried about the Redskins week one. I think no. I could go out there and throw a couple touchdowns against the Redskins All week right, one. What I'm worried about <laughs> right. is the Falcons right. on the road week two on Sunday Night Football yeah. and a short week at Lambeau in week four. That could This could be – listen, well, obviously I'm skipping over the Lions in week three, but this could easily be a two-and-two two start to the season, which is what you want to avoid Agreed. in any case. Obviously, going on that short week on the road, week four, that's probably a loss no matter who you're playing. Just That's just the name of the game. But one, but three and one, I want. I want three and one start. I think, I think the sunglasses that T is wearing is uh, blocking his vision. <laughs> okay, one series being played today is going to be the equivalent in a couple of weeks of him going out there week one to Washington. T. And having a good game, a successful T, game. T, 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 listen, can I, can go ahead, Chris. Sorry, no, go ahead, sorry. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, can, I'm going to make a comparison here. Uh, when it comes to education and school, have you ever heard of a thing called cramming? Yeah, I have. You have? Yes. I try yeah. to avoid it. Yeah, that's what we're trying to avoid with Carson here. <laughs> we don't want him to cram the night before week one. He's not going to cram. But but he is. Like like you've said, like I've said, like Max agrees with. What? The game is in game. It's different. Agreed. Last week you were talking about in practice, the guys aren't allowed to hit each other. True. And but you never could. Uh, you never could hit the but, quarterback. They never change. But there's still well, yeah, true. But there's still something about the game atmosphere that is different. We we mm-hmm. want Carson. To get a feel for that, okay, so that he's not cold. But but Carson does have a feel for that. He, he hasn't he, had a feel for it since what week nine when he got injured. He, well, he got injured well, no, earlier. Sorry, than that, he I got think. Or injured. And way he played two or three games and then finally couldn't take it anymore. That was oh, yeah. I, I'm now having like scary flashbacks to that yeah. regular season Saints game. Oh, gosh. I just think there's something. Now listen to you. I never played the game of football. Obviously, I've never played the game of football, so I don't know what it has you have before, right? Only at the high school level. So, and I again, I played sports only at the high school level. But I, one thing I will say, you have friends growing up, right? You're mm-hmm. close to. You're out shooting hoops in the drive. You're hanging out. So you're close to each other, almost like a, te- a teammate, right? All right. When you go out for the team, playing all those pickup games, playing with each other growing up as kids, get into the high school level, you have all that time together. And it, I believe that it helps you when you're out on the court and make the team and play better because, one, you have that, you know what the talents are. Like, for example, I had friends growing up, I know what their talents were. You, you find the open shooter, right. you know, or yeah. you find the driver, to, you, you get the ball in this guy's hands because he can dribble and, and he can pass well and he has good court vision. Okay. From a football standpoint, you're out there with the relatedness to the Eagles. If you get out there in a preseason game and you have that D Jacks bombs and, you know, dishing the ball off to Sanders, getting out in the flat and stuff like that. On top of the fact that he yeah, hasn't, ludicrous. on top of the fact that he hasn't played a game since what week eight, and he's got to show his health. In my opinion, I think you got to get him out there. I do want to backpedal to uh, you could go in and just light up the Redskins. <laughs> yeah, I just want to backpedal that. Really, I know I, Max. I'm sure you were a talented. Player. I'm just going to look for my security blanket, Zach Ertz. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off the weed, <laughs> Max. You're Max. Please, Max. You're what five eleven. Yeah, about that. About that? Okay. Well, Baker Mayfield's about my same height, so Baker back Mayfield? off. Baker Mayfield? Okay. But can you can you sling it like Baker? No. No? I know you <laughs> Not were, too many people I know, can, though. I know you were first. a pitcher in high school. But, Indeed. But, I uh, look, I, I, I mean, that, that might be a little ludicrous. Listen, the Redskins yeah. are arguably the worst team in the NFL. What I was saying was, I'm not worried about <laughs> know, them in week one. I know. I'm you just, throw Carson out there, he's going to destroy that entire I'm team. I'm just poking fun. All right. I'm not worried about any player on that team. Give me one name. All right, maybe Ryan Kerrigan. He's always yeah, at our Ryan number. Ryan Kerrigan. He's a pain in the rear end. But we pain. got Lane to block him hey, hey. and JP on the other side. Who's going to get – he can't get past either one on of those the, guys. On the offensive side, I am I'm kind of curious to see Darius Geis because he looked good out of college. Oh, he at LSU? Yeah, yeah he was yeah, damn he good. So, I, so maybe a little concerned about him. 
Yeah, but they don't. I can't really name their receivers and their quarterbacks. I don't strike any fair in me. And considering the fact that their franchise left tackle is still holding out in his camp. Oh well, yeah. Oh, he's not going to play. Yeah, he's not going to be. Back I forgot about that. Soon. Yep. Yes. Trent Williams ain't playing, so yeah. he's not. That's he, a real shame. Well, who's that guy they just signed from the Giants? Uh, Landon Collins. He's pretty good. He signed that massive contract with the Redskins. Yeah, but he's an in the box safety. I'm just saying, there's another talented name you got to look out for. And, and, yeah, in the box. So we're up to just what? don't throw three. Four? Just, just don't throw it short. We're we're up to four players. Yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. I don't like I don't like how the season because I know oh, we're going to go. We're, yeah. I know we're going to get all hyped up for week one. We're going to go into that link. We're going to beat the Redskins, and I just feel like that next game is going to be a letdown game. Going on the road, I don't think we're going to be, you know, as hyped up. I should say, because one, we're coming off an easy win against the Redskins. If we lose to the Redskins, I'm, I, in all seriousness, I, I'm not watching the rest of the season. <laughs> I was I was actually just about to say, for your sake, I hope they beat the Redskins. <laughs> you guys can replay the show over and over again if you want to, <laughs> if we lose to the Redskins. Because one, we'll just laugh, and but two, I won't be laughing. Because listen, if we lose this team at home in the home opener... Uh, we're, we're, I'm just I'll quit. Man. We'll talk about uh, the upcoming Flyers season. Dwayne Haskins <laughs> might be. Hey, I would love that. I love my Flyers, but Dwayne Haskins. You never know, man. Hey, like I, I say it all the time. Sometimes you drop a guy in a situation, and you know he he, he lives up to it. Remember when they dropped Josh Rosen in a situation? How that mm. turned out? He got traded yep. after his rookie season. Because there's nobody there to help him out. Even David Johnson had one of his worst seasons of his career. Hey, man, Ky- in Kyler Murray, man, that last preseason game, I looked at him, man. He got his behind. He handed to him on a silver platter. I don't, did he like throw for more than like 20 yards in that game? I think he was like three for seven with like 20 yards passing. He got. I know he took a safety. That was the Raiders game, right? Yep. I, f- I, f- I feel like he is like so overhyped, Kyler Murray. I'm did not- you watch him play at Oklahoma? I was about to say, yeah, you, yeah. Because <laughs> he was an absolute freak of but nature still, at Oklahoma. Yes, he was. Still, I feel like he's so over. He would throw like seven touchdowns a game easily. Yeah. It was Kyle. like it was like you know that kid in the high school that's just bigger and better than everybody else. You can't do anything about it. Hey, uh, Kyle was the, the problem. What's the key word you just said in that sentence? Uh, bigger. Yeah, high got, school. Oh, that's, <laughs> I was going. I thought you were going for height thing there. No, he's short. high oh. school. <laughs> Man, look. I, uh, look. The worst player on every single NFL team lit it up in high school. Okay. Yeah, but Colin Murray was doing this to college defense. Boots to asses. And also, too, you got to remember, people were saying the same thing about Baker coming out. Too small, small hands, blah, see, blah. See, that's stuff I don't well. worry about. Like, if you if you have the dog in you and you can play the game, I don't care what height you are. Russell Wilson. I'll tell you job. what, he, Oklahoma's top five football program in the country. He's coming from the, good, from a, from the right <laughs> spot. And Lincoln yep. Riley, the head coach of Oklahoma. He's coming from a good uh, background there. Yep. And Cliff Kingsbury, by the way. Yes. Good offensive-minded coach. We'll see. I, I can't believe he got hired there, though. He really didn't have a great track record at Texas Tech. He, did he coach Patrick Mahomes in you college for one season? Did he? I don't remember. I got the little thing. I don't up. remember either. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's still, that hire still befuddles me a little bit because it's like he was coming off a losing season. And everybody's, he got fired yeah, and everybody still like, wants that, that, like, next that, Sean McVay. Right. Everybody's looking for that next Sean McVay. Right. They want that offensive mind. Nobody ever thinks about the defensive mind. Like, everybody, everybody wants the big thrill, the, the touchdowns, the yards after the catch, but nobody thinks about the guy who's up at night thinking about how to stop that. Like that's the whole thing. Defensive defensive minded coaches get no kind of love, and I have a problem with that. Seriously, like I, I, we need to see more defensive coach, defensive head coaches. What are you talking about? Everyone loves Bill Belichick. Yeah, but Bill, come on, man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's one topic we haven't discussed yet. Right, one team we haven't discussed actually. The San Diego, or I keep saying the San Diego Chargers, Los <laughs> Angeles Chargers. Right, Melvin Gordon holding out into the season. What do you guys make of this? I know they have Austin Eckler. I know they have Justin Jackson backing them up. Two talented backs, but. There, real, there is only one Melvin Gordon. Real quick, before we get serious into this conversation, um, I recently had a fantasy draft, and somebody drafted Melvin Gordon in the first round. Um, ha ha! That's all I got to say. Look, and Ezekiel Elliott. Did look, he he ha, better ha. have gotten the handcuffs then, like look, Austin Eckler or somebody some, like that. Some people are just severely misinformed, just like me. Hmm. I love the, yeah. <laughs> Chris, you better be doing that research on those fantasy hey, drafts. Come hey, up. Hey, I, Do yeah, that I'm research. You got this best. laptop right here. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I know you got an off day coming up this week sometime. <laughs> It's today. There you go. <laughs> or take the uh, Ooh, yeah. 
take yeah. a few hours tonight, sip it on your tea you know in your recliner. You know what? Pull up I'm the laptop. Gl- I'm glad you reminded me because today and tomorrow are my first two days off in over Oh, look at that. Two in a row. Look at you. <laughs> first two days off. Like, two days off in a row. I'm so happy. I can't wait. Sorry. We we are getting severely off course here. Yes. All right. Back to the matter at hand. Um, Melvin Gordon. Ooh, looks like he might be doing the same thing as Ziggy Elliott is doing. Now, again, we, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago about who do you trust more getting back on the field first. Now it's looking like Zeke might be out there. As long as they give, obviously, if Jerry Jones can give him a ballpark number in his range, you get him back on the field. And it's not like Zeke's sitting there eating a pile of donuts on his couch, right? He's in Mexico training, working but hard, you uh, in his best shape of his life. Melvin Gordon's over here. They're, they're saying they're millions apart, like $10-plus plus million apart in their contract talks. I don't see him coming back on the field anytime soon. Nope. And that's the that's the sad reality. Um, and well, it's just a, sad it's reality a shame. for Cowboys He's a fans. good player, too. You want to watch him play. As a, as a football fan in general. Oh, yeah. Missing the town out like there. I still like want to be, you know what I mean? I, I want to face the Cowboys at their peak because I don't want Cowboys fans to say, we didn't have seek. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. So, but that's what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 I know. It's what's going to happen. We would have beat you if you had Zeke. Like, well, T, you sound T, like every You Cowboys watch a lot fan. of film. I want to I ask you this question. All right. Watching those two Cowboys games last year, what was the big reasons why we lost those games? Man. <laughs> okay, the one in Dallas. Oh, boy. The one, oh, in, the one in Dallas who got screwed by the refs and Wentz was hurt. So yeah. I'll give you that. All right. Now, the one at home, that one was mostly because of the defense. Because they allowed Zeke to rip off for four or five, six yards. <laughs> Amari Cooper, too, had a and good then game. They, and then they couldn't contain Dak Prescott when he did run out. And then Amari Cooper lit up. Awful sentence. And then the, Amari Cooper lit us up. So basically the entire offense was just on fire. Our offense didn't play too bad that game. No, our offense didn't play that bad. Yeah. But the defense really kind of let us down. And um, I think Russell Douglas was guarding um, Amari Cooper. I think and then this is time. my point, too. Again, the same names are coming up in the cornerback position this year. Do you trust anybody in, in the backfield there, or I should say, in the secondary, especially? But then who else do you got to play? I mean, do you trust Ronald um, Darby I don't trust, do you trust Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills? I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I don't trust anybody. The only, you know a guy I trust back there? Malcolm Jenkins. That's who I trust. Sadly, he plays safe. Avante Maddox, you might be able to throw into that category, but, man, he's undersized. Well, that's undersized. why you play him in the slot. So, so really, who do you – I mean, Jalen Mills, no. Russell Douglas, no. Sidney Jones, probably not. Coming off that Achilles, still doesn't look like himself out of college. Well, that well, – Ronald Darby, no. He was no. still recovering last coming year, off so the, this is the year where you kind of got to evaluate him now. Ronald Darby's come off the ACL. I mean, we, I we really Darby have a makeshift secondary with, you know, a guys that are talented at some aspects of playing the position and others that are talented in other areas right. of playing that position. We don't really have that do-it-all type of corner. Listen, I I just need the corners to like you know put their hands on a receiver. I really I do think you play by matchup, right? You play I by matchup. Yeah. What are the size of the receivers? What's their skill another, set? You, oh God, you don't triggered another. You don't triggered another rant. Hear it. You don't triggered another what rant. Hear it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> mature, but this mature conversation. Remember? Yeah, it's a mature right? conversation. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're, we're going to be sponge. mature about this conversation. All right. All I'm going to say is this: I agree with you a thousand percent about matchups. We stick one corner. And keep him there on that side. We do not move the corners around to match up against the best receivers, which I think is an asinine strategy as well. Or rotate rotate the guys as far as the players. Like you got a smaller, like shifty receiver in the slot. Throw yes. Maddox in there. He can Thank he's quick you. and he can roll with them. You know? You're not lining up. You're not lining up Maddox against like Adam Thielen and just letting him burn That's you stupid. every play. Yes, it, I completely agree. Like when we play the Falcons, I feel more comfortable. Putting Rasul Douglas on Julio Jones because of height. And the size that he has, right? Correct. I do not feel comfortable putting Avante Maddox on a tall guy like A.J. Green, for example. Asinine. Fair. Like, let's move these guys around. Let's match them toe-to-toe. Chris, did you pull something up over there? What do you got? Uh, I'm just saying. No, but I I didn't pull anything up. Uh, I am pissed off. I'm just over here laughing. Okay. Quick question for you guys: Would you trade Vitae and like a second or third rounder for Clowney? I would entertain that. Vitae and a second or third? I would entertain that. Yeah, why not? I would entertain that. Yes, I would. Um, the only, uh, yeah. the yeah. only, see, the only question mark I have is 
what are we going to do at right guard? Because uh, Brandon Brooks, I think, is still hurt, and I don't know if he's going to be ready by week one. Well, Vita is not really a guard. I mean, would you he's take not a guard. guard? He's been actually very impressive. Would you? At the would right you guard gamble position. with like Malata there? No, God, no, no. too big. Oh my no. God, too big. Huh? And he's not talented. I need him at he, whoa, 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 whoa! He's whoa, not talented. Whoa, whoa, I watched the two preseason games. I, he's whoa. not. He doesn't it's have funny this. To me too. Look, I'm, he's I'm not just, there yet. T. I'm just trying to throw some names at you guys, like Matt Pryor. Are you oh, going to put geez, Matt Pryor there? Before? No. Look, shut the lid. Shut I'm the lid on. I'm giving that. you your <laughs> options. I'm giving you your options. <laughs> look, 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 Nate Herbig. What? What is that? A truck driver? Wow. He's the guy behind Matt Pryor. Wow. <laughs> Truck driver. This is some bullshit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that's classic. Too, right? <laughs> Look, so we are very clearly confident. <laughs> very clearly. Yeah, my only question is, who would you put at the right guard spot until Brandon Brooks comes back? Like, yeah. That would be my only question. Uh, you, well, you can't put Wisniewski there for temporarily for right now. No, you can't. He's not good. It's you can. You know, it's bad. We did win the Super Bowl with Wisniewski at the start team of the position. This team is built on depth. True. I don't think depth. you can just lose a, a good player like Vitae. That's one of our few whoa, 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 good whoa, draft whoa. picks. Vitae, we got him late. On a, what do we get him in the fifth round or something like that out of TCU? He's, this yeah. is not a Vitae fan, buddy. You I'm not. I'm not the biggest Vitae fan, but I'm not going to completely disrespect him and say that he ain't good. I mean, dog, go on. No, I'm not. What did and I, then you disrespect my life. I'm ready to jump you across must the have confused me. He, I, he put he put forward a trade request. Yeah, I'm did. not saying Vitae is not it. good. No, that's not what I was going for. Did I say that? That's not. I apologize. I did not mean to say Vitae is good. Vitae is a good, a decent player, especially. From the bargain we took him at, and we took him pretty later in the draft that yeah, one season. Fair fair. No, you said Malata is a bad player. Anyway, Malata, yeah, that's what I said. See, that's what I said. Not Vitae. Malata I says not a good player, I, only because is, he's not there yet. He he doesn't have the skill yes, set. Yes, he's wrong. But if you really paid attention to what I paid attention to, I seen one play where Malata took that defensive end, crashed him into the other defensive lineman, and completely collapsed the defensive line just by himself. Okay. All right. Listen, we're not That's playing rugby. See, we're not playing happened. rugby over there, bud. We're not playing rugby. We doggone there are. <laughs> Wait. That's yeah. how I like my lineman to be. I want to see that because, I mean, I didn't get to watch last week. Because All right. I got you. You're off tonight, though. You're watching the game tonight. I am off tonight. I can't wait. Yes. Eagles, Ravens. Please don't play once. Please. Like, I'm, I'm give, him, give him a series or two. <sighs> yeah, we have T, different T, how about this? Us. If, you know... Knock on wood, uh, something happens. You can rub it all on my face and Max. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to do. If Wentz more plays time. tonight, T, then I think you got to uh, you got to just say be positive and say, listen, you're right. They're just trying to get him out there, try to get him somewhere. Right? You are absolutely correct. But if he gets hurt, and I don't care if he gets a oh, cut, well, it, if he gets <laughs> a cut, I'm coming back in Tuesday at 8 a.m. and I kid you not, Boots to acid. I'm delivering it to y'all. It's that early? Come on. <laughs> don't care. Uh, okay. I don't care. I'm uh, not putting up with it. Yeah. It's too much horse <laughs> It's too much. Speaking of Peter Laviolette, there's just two things I wanted to bring up with you real quick. Yeah, right, we got Flyers. three minutes left. About the Flyers. Okay. Just last week, uh, Claude Giroux just became the longest tenured Flyers captain of all time. Who did he pass? Over, over Bobby Clark, over Eric Lindros. Longest tenured captain. Oh, captain. good for and, you. Um, dude, he gets so much disrespect. <laughs> I know. Dude, I'm, he gets so much dis- Claude Giroux is the only reason I was, the Flyers aren't a joke of a sports team. I was playing that for the haters. <laughs> Claude Giroux, if it wasn't for him, the Flyers would be a bottom five team every year. Every nah, I disagree year. with that. We, uh, got, we, got talent. Okay, we, got, since, we have no okay, talent. Since, to, we, since we got Patrick and Provorov, who wants $10 million. Are we still going to pay him $10 million? If we do, I will eat my shoes. <laughs> oh, why, why do you say that? He's a good player. He's a good player. He is not a $10 million player. Who would you rather have, him or Ghost? Provorov. Yeah, exactly. So you're paying, not, you're paying a guy I'm $10 not million. paying him $10 million. Yeah, you are. you got to pay him $10 million. I will at most put, pay him eight. He, he's, are you he's kidding he's me? your best... A young and up and coming defenseman. Okay, There's, and in two years from now, you're going to be like, oh, we're going to need him because Braun's going to be gone okay, and me, old. Let me, this skin, it'll be gone and old. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. Okay, uh, I again, I don't know how much you know players around the league. There's a defenseman on Columbus named Zach Warensky who is offensively as good as Ghost, but way better defensively than Provorov. Yeah, screw that. Who I is, want defensemen or defenders. Getting, I don't want guys like Ghost trying to go score twenty thousand goals. I want winners. 
A defenseman who I would argue is better than Ivan Provorov is only getting five million dollars. Right. Same draft class as Ivan Provorov. Too. Same exact. He was actually the pick after Ivan Provorov. Well, then why don't we take him? Mm. You know, that's a good question. Listen, why don't you I, be I like the to general keep, manager? I, I like to keep the game of, flop, of hockey as simple as possible. Start with your goalie. We already got. Move up to defenseman. I don't want guys trying to score from the blue line. I want guys stopping the puck. Like Racco Gudis. We traded Racco Gudis. He was fine. He was the one I guy that was playing good defense. He would smash your guys in the boards. Last and he would take he, the puck away. Last, and again, he'll give you the occasional goal from the blue line. Last year, he was really the only good defenseman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We trade him away for Niskin, who I get. We want more. We want veteran guys in the, in the locker room now, which is fine. Okay, I understand it. But I want guys that are defensemen. Because also, how many times did you see guys just zigzag through our D and then Carhartt's dead? Also, bunch of also, low lifes. Also. Thank you, T. <laughs> You want to talk some hockey? Hop in the conversation. <laughs> also, also, there are only two defensemen in the league who are getting paid ten million dollars or more. Is it, would no? You? All right, no, you're right. No, you, ten million dollars for a hockey player? Yes. That's not named Sidney Crosby. No. Yep. Or Ovechkin. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, it, Ovechkin isn't even getting paid ten million dollars. You can't. But what you want to do is find it's guys ridiculous. that don't want those big money contracts because, it, like, it, like relating to football, it kills your cap. Yeah. You yeah, know, giving does. that quarterback that hundred and thirty million dollar contract kills your cap. That's why when we gave one to 107, we were able to save some money there. Man. But uh, it, I can't, again, Chris, believe me, I'm there with you. Hockey this season, Flyers are going to be better, hopefully. It, uh, if guys take steps forward, maybe. Uh, I'm I concerned expect them about, to. I'm, ex- I'm concerned about Kevin Hayes. Uh, no, nah, don't be concerned. He's a good player. That He is, but. We're not expecting, I mean, not, I know we paid him a lot, but he's the, what is he, the second liner? He's the second line. He's going to be second line center. He We severely overpaid for him. You know who's uh, my, probably, arguably the most, the MVP of our team is uh, Sean Couturier, in my opinion. That guy is he's yeah, just consistent as they yeah. come. He he is he's I would say maybe as close to surpassing Giroux as the best player. But anyway, all right, let's, Ooh, let's, yeah. let's, shut, let's T, shut it down. Let's T, shut it you down. have some things to say, don't you? All right. If you missed any of this episode, you can always go to Philly Dash Experience dot Simplecast dot com. Say so repeat it. Repeat it. Philly Dash Experience dot Simplecast dot com. People, we are also available on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all major platforms, including YouTube. And then one more thing. Yes, this will be the last time you will be hearing us on Tuesdays from 11 to 12. We will be moving our time starting next week, Tuesdays, 8 to 9 in the morning. So you'll be able to catch us in on your morning drive. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Wrong. Oh, yeah. That's Tan- how you do it. With some Tanner, we missed you, buddy. We need some cooler heads in here because mm-hmm. when, it's, when you're not here, it's just way too hot in here when it's me and T yelling at Max. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys. All right, on, next week, boys. We'll see Let's you guys on Tuesday. You're always on your back. You piece of Swiss cheese. You understand what I'm saying to you?